Thank you everybody for getting a rain barrel and doing this at your home because what you're doing is what we are interested in at the Winnesquatucket River Watershed Council, which is capturing and using rainwater where it falls. And doing this at your home is a great way to do that because when we capture and use the water where it falls, first of all, we are uh, not creating extra pollution as that rainwater runs off the street and into our waterways. And we're uh, conserving water and we're preventing flooding. So every little thing that we can do in terms of green infrastructure, and this is what we call green infrastructure, anything that captures and treats water using plants and soils as green infrastructure. And in this way, what you're doing is you're using your own plants and soils at your home to capture and treat this stormwater because you're capturing it from your rooftop and then using it at your home on your own landscaping. So thank you very much for being part of this and making your home much more stormwater friendly. Today we're gonna to talk about placement drilling holes. That's it. We'll spend the hour trying to figure out where this thing goes, where, where that thing goes, wherever it is, that thing behind me. And also what we should expect to come off our, uh, wherever we're placing it. Uh, we'll do some math. So if you have a little piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, We'll, uh, we'll, we'll come up with a math problem, and hopefully you can figure that out. I don't have my piece of paper in front of me, but I think it's up here somewhere, so we'll figure it out as we go along. Up, I'm going to spend a little bit of time with, um, with, with where we are in the process, and for that, um, I'm, I'm going to use the laptop here. So if, uh, if I'm not speaking loud enough, uh, let me know. Trust me when I tell you I have both an indoor voice and an outdoor voice. So if you need for me to speak louder, if you can't hear me, wave your hands, do something like can't hear you or something, and I'll speak louder. So a couple of things happened since we were here last. One is I got my rain barrel and tried to make some decisions as to where the, the, uh, the spout is going to go and where the connection is going to go for the connecting to the downspout. So I've decided that I'm going to be, I'm going to put this on the ground on, on a few cinder blocks and I bought some I bought some uh, concrete pads that, that you can find pretty much anywhere at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or uh, Ace Hardware, but just about anywhere. And, and if you go there during any part of the day and you find some that are broken, they'll, they'll almost give them to you. And I picked up two that uh, three of the corners were, were uh, square, unbroken. Uh, I picked up two for two dollars and one cent. So essentially they gave me a two for one type of deal. And that's all I need. Well, uh, uh, all I needed was three corners. And we're going to do that first. We're going to level it first so you get some idea of what it looks like when it has to be leveled. So I've decided where, where the, where the, uh, the spout is going to go. I've decided that somewhere on one of these sides is going to be the connector for the downspout. And I've decided that this is going to be the location for my for my rain barrel. Just so I can see what's going on here. There we go. Bring this a little closer. So I need to level it. along a shovel and a spade and I need to uh, fill in a little bit of the area here with a little bit of soil take out a little bit of soil here but the rain barrel is such as going to go right here hey Paul, Paul. Can you speak up please yeah I'll try thank you 
Here, maybe I can do it this way. So the rain barrel is, is going to go here and will go in this general direction. Let's see, perfect. Um, here's my oil tank. <laughs> here's my downspout. Uh, here's uh, the beginning of a deck. So it's probably going to go right here somewhere. So the first thing I need to do is to level this area, at least visually anyway, give me, a, give me an approximation of, of where, give me an approximation as to how much soil I have to move around to make this area level. There's a bunch of earthworms there. That's always a good sign. Move those guys out of the way. Now, for our purposes here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, and, but I want to give you some idea of what you should be doing. Remember, when this rain barrel is full, it's 460 pounds, so 55 gallons of water. Each gallon of water weighs 8.345 pounds per gallon. So 55 gallons is about 460 pounds. I've got a few pavers here and I'll position them. Can you see that? I think you can. I apologize for turning my back towards you. And I've got a few broken ones here as well. Remember, once this is on these pads, it's not going to go anywhere. At least not until you drain it. Something like that. I'll come back later and de detail this more. Uh, by the way, there are two images here. So if you put it on speaker's view or you click on one of my images, one from my iPhone, what the other one from my, my laptop, uh, you, can, uh, you can pin the video, make the video larger in speaker's view so you can see a little more detail about what's going on. And then I need a level, because there's no way to picture if this is level or not. So I'll put my level down in two of the pavers, and then adjust it accordingly so that, so that the pads are level way before I put the rain barrel on. Now, you're probably wondering, so why did I select this spot? Why this spot than any other spot? And uh, to demonstrate that a little bit, Here's a little video. Okay, so now it's time to decide where this thing goes. Let's review. We've cleaned the inside, we've cleaned the outside, we've sanded the outside, we've given it a primer coat, and we've put on the beginnings of a decoration. That'll either blend in with the house, or it'll just look pretty the way it is, or who knows, whatever you've got in mind. One of the things you should think about when placing it is just how much rainwater comes off that particular part of the roof into that gutter, down that downspout, and into the rain barrel. This roof is 25 feet long and about 12 feet wide. And if I do the calculations right, that means that on the 25 foot side there's about 300 inches by 144 inches. You multiply those two together and you come up with 43,200 square inches. And if that roof gets an inch of water, an inch of water, could be one rainstorm, could be a bunch of rainstorms, that means that you multiply 43,200 times that one inch and you'll end up with 43,200 cubic inches. Now a gallon of water contains 231 cubic inches. So if you take that 43,200 divided by 231, 
you come up with 187 gallons. That means that roof, when it rains and we get at least an inch of rain, that means 187 gallons will come off that roof into the gutter in, down, down the downspout. And if we hook this up, we'll get the majority of it in our rain barrel. Now this roof is a little different. It certainly has a lot more surface area. It's longer and it's wider. Okay, let's do some math. We've got a roof that's about 11 feet wide and about 31 feet long. We multiply both of those numbers by 12, 12 inches and a foot. For the 31, we get 372. For the 11 feet, we get 132. Both of those are inches. Multiply those two together, we get 49,104 square inches. We multiply that number by one inch of rain and we get 49,104 cubic inches of rain. We divide that number by 231, that's how many cubic inches there are in a gallon of water. And this roof will generate close to 212 gallons of water when it rains about an inch. So I think this is where it's going to go. You may want to do your calculations in your head or if you know exactly where your rain barrel is going to go. But that is certainly one determination. That's one factor in deciding, in deciding where this rain barrel is going to go. Certainly there are others. There are aesthetics. It's also what's allowed. If you rent property, they may not want something in the front yard. Maybe something uh, is more appropriate in the backyard or along the side, along the driveway. But I've decided that this is where it's going to go. Next thing I've decided is where the down, where the um, where the spout is going to go. decided it's going to go right about here and if you if you get your rain barrel and turn it around or look at it you'll see actually let's see if I can find it right here it might be a little, more, a little easier to read when it's painted there it is right there right about here I don't know if you can see that you might be able to see it there you go. I might be able to see it on the on the iPhone here. But there are gallon markers indicated. Here's five gallons, 10 gallons, 15 gallons. This is probably about 20 gallons, 20 gallons of water at uh, 8.345 pounds per gallon. It's, you know, it's a, it's a heavy, heavy duty amount of water that's in here. So I've decided that's where it's going to go. Um, I've also, I also thought that was the best place to put a pad down here. There's where my rain bucket, there's where my bucket's going to go. So yours might be different. And, and if it is different, um, plan accordingly. Some of you may want to put it on blocks. Some of you may want to put it on some type of raised platform. That's entirely up to you. One of the reasons I like it down here is because this puts some weight on the bottom part of the of the rain barrel. And when it's heavy, this is, is less likely to flop around in a windstorm. Last time we were here for most of most of you, you may have heard the story that that I had a uh, a uh, windstorm in the back. I had a little uh, gust of wind about 60 miles an hour. The front part of the house was great. The back part of the house uh, in the woods, the trees were whopping back and forth. Everything blew down. My, my uh, charcoal grill, my, uh, my uh, umbrella, uh, all the deck chairs, everything. Everything blew down. The only thing that didn't blow down was the rain barrel because there was about 160, uh, 100 and something gallons of water here. 
So that's one reason why you may want to put the, the spout here. Okay. So Paul, I just want to point questions? out also that um, those the faucet that comes with the rain barrel is threaded so you can add a hose to it it you can couple a hose right onto the end of it you don't have to use it with a watering can you could use it with a hose but a watering can is great too sure sure and and uh, depending on uh depending on where you put this uh with the hose you'll have to put this on blocks or something to raise it up um uh, because uh, you'll, you'll get a lot more pressure if this is lowered down I, I prefer this. It's a good exercise and a lot of fun uh, watching the water come out and getting into the bucket. And, you know, there's all those things that uh, uh, go beyond just uh, collecting water. Okay, any questions so far? It was a great comment. Anything else? Um, there's a question here and I can't read it. Can you read it, uh, Alicia C? Yeah, absolutely. The ridge of the barrel won't cause the faucet gasket to leak. It will not. No, it will not. Um, the, the gasket is uh, internal and, uh, and it's pretty thick. So for example, where is it? Yeah, this is pretty thick. And when this goes on, this actually pushes that gasket out a little bit more and seals that. If you're at all concerned about that, plus you're drilling a circular hole, hole. so you're drilling a circular hole within it. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, this is where the, the, uh, the connection takes place. In other words, it's not here, it's not along here. It's really along here, so once you plug it in. If you're all uncomfortable with that, putting it on that ridge or a little bit, you put it, certainly put it a little higher. Um, I, I will probably put it a little bit higher uh, just because this, this handle gets in the way sometimes, so it might stick out something like that uh, down here. Well, maybe down here, maybe right there. So wherever you put it, get a magic marker. And do two things. And you're doing these two things to make sure you get the right drill bit and the right placement. So in this packet, and most of you have one of these packets, you'll see these, uh, these drills, these uh, drill bits. Mark the drill bit with a magic marker, number one. Put a number one on there. And also on your rain barrel, put the number one. Approximation of where it's going to go. And if this small magic marker, the fine point magic marker doesn't work, get a bigger magic marker. So you can see it from a distance. That'll remind you that, number one, that's where this hole is going to go. Number two, this is what, this is this, the, the bit you're going to be using. This is the, the drill you're going to use. I'm calling these things maybe by the wrong name, so. Also in here, a series of directions, but I hope you follow almost to the letter. So it's a hole saw, thank you. So this is the hole saw, the smallest one is for this guy right here, this gasket. Any questions about that? And this is an inch and a quarter. So make sure that you, you get the smallest one. Uh, we've, we've certainly been on, on rain barrel workshops where folks just grab anything, any one of these uh, hole saws and uh, start drilling uh, without any consideration for any thought about where it goes. And all of a sudden they end up with a really big hole here. Then they have to go somewhere else. They have to go to a Home Depot or Lowe's or 
or Ace Hardware or some other hardware store and get uh, get a faucet that's uh, much much thicker, much much wider. Okay, so we're going to drill a hole. I think we're going to drill a hole. Now, it's raining outside. It's uh, starting, starting to be a little more moist than it was a few minutes ago. So I've got to practice a little bit of safety around here to make sure I don't get electrocuted. So give me a second to get, to get organized. Any questions so far about this? Ask away. Paul, what's the netting thing on the top of your barrel? Yeah, I, I found some screen netting, uh, which is also pretty good for mosquitoes and bugs. It's a combination of uh, metal and fabric, or uh, it's coated metal rather, and it's a screen screen fabric. Um, what I will eventually do is to drill some holes in the top, put the screen fabric on top of, of the holes, and and I'll have another way for the water to get in. Uh, it will come in through the side. I'm not quite sure where, probably this side. Uh, but this, may, this rain barrel may end up somewhere else. I wanna give me the option of, of maybe having a downspout come here. You know, depending on, on how, often, <clears throat> how often this gets used. Uh, this is going to be used for, uh, there's a raised garden going up here. There's some ornamentals going planting some ornamentals. So this water most likely will be used for the ornamentals. Probably not for the raised beds, but, but most likely for the ornamentals uh, to get them established, to maintain them during the course of their life. Uh, if there are any droughts or anything, that's where these rain barrels come, come really handy uh, to, give, uh, to, give, to give the plants uh, an extra push when there's a drought. All right, let me get a drill, plug myself in, and uh, we'll drill a hole down there. That'll be our first hole. So while Paul is doing that, I want to um, just say that you don't have to do the portion where you drill the extra holes in the top and you put the screen on because your kit will connect directly to your downspout and just create a hole exactly the right size for the fitting that slides into your downspout. So you can get all the water you need straight out of your downspout. I, I've done that in my home, and I'll tell you, there's plenty of water because, you know, when Paul did those calculations, a one-inch storm you're getting from, you know, any decent-sized roof, more than 100 gallons, and you've got a 55-gallon drum right there. So even on your first storm, you'll probably fill up that whole thing just using the fitting that comes with your kit. So Paul's showing you a couple of options and you're welcome to use those. He is really a rain barrel expert. He uses them all the time everywhere um, around his house. And he's done it a couple of different ways. But what I really love about the kits that you've got is you don't, don't have to do all that extra work. You don't have to put that netting on there. You can just connect it straight up to your downspout with a little hole and you don't have to saw anything. So I, I have a different version of a rain barrel that's similar to what Paul is showing you here, where I actually did have to saw off the bottom of my downspout to uh, get the connector to flow water into the top of the rain barrel. And I really don't like it because it's harder to control when water is coming in and when it's not coming in. And with uh, your version, of your kit, if you merely turn the fitting upside down in your downspout, and I know Paul is gonna show this to you, you can stop the water from flowing into your rain barrel. And it naturally has an overflow so that it stops when it's full at a certain level. I should have mentioned too that, and I think uh, Alicia was um, touching on it, is that this, once this rain barrel fills up, the, 
there'll be an overflow of water. Where does that overflow water go? Right now, that water is um, is uh, right next to the um, foundation, and it's uh, and I used to have a diverter here, and I'll have to put the diverter back in uh, on the, uh, the the downspout here. Um, the the two rain barrels. I'll show you what that looks like a little later. That I have up on the deck. Uh, I didn't drill a hole in here. I didn't drill a hole in the downspout. I just disconnected it uh, because in the winter time um, I wanted to I wanted to use that again. There are a couple of questions here, and maybe uh, Alicia and Alicia can answer the, the two questions there. So, where does the excess rainwater go? Yeah, great question. So, so the way these work, and I think Alicia mentioned it, that once uh, when, when water comes down the downspout, pretty much goes on the sides of the downspout. It doesn't fall down directly. So that's why you see this lip here. You see this uh, catch. And the, the rainwater accumulates here, comes up on top. I'm sorry, accumulates here and then flows out here. Let's see, do you see that? I can't remember which camera I'm on. But anyway, you get the idea. And if you have one of these kits, uh, you, you can certainly uh, follow along. By, by looking at it. Once this is full, that rainwater just goes through through the downspout, uh, through the hole and down the down the, uh, the rest of the downspout. Um, I had a diverter here. I got to put that diverter back in once this is all set up. So let's drill the hole so I can shut this off and not get electrocuted. And again, if you have one of the one of the kits, comes with a drill bit along with all the hole saws, saw drills, the locking nut. Whoops, locking nut goes in the wrong place because I put it in the wrong place. Okay. Finger tight is good. Uh, don't feel like you need a wrench or some pliers or something to tighten this up. Finger tight is good. We have a question about whether kits are still available. And the answer is that we still have, I think, two barrels and kits available, but we also have just these converter kits that you could use on you know, any good grade of plastic container. You don't have to use one of these Coca-Cola syrup containers. You can, you can just find, um, you know, a food grade uh, container, plastic container that you can convert into a rain barrel or something else. So yes, you can still get the kits. And um, if you want more, let, let us know and we'll find a way to get them to you. I can put the link to the Eventbrite where people buy tickets into the chat. So if anybody is interested in getting another kit, they can order it right through there. A couple of things about uh, uh, drill bits and, and putting, uh, putting these on a, on a drill. For anyone who's never used a drill before, uh, if you have a, a wired drill, uh, make sure everything is, is, um, is safe in terms of its connection. Use some type of uh, uh, surge protector or trip mechanism so that, uh, and it has to be grounded. Make sure that it's grounded. And uh, if, if it's uh, an outdoor connect, um, outdoor connection as this is, uh, be sure to plug it into another, another surge protector with a ground. The other thing, uh, if you read the, the uh, the instructions always wear some type of eye protection. Um, the chances of things flying around are minimal. However, uh, it's the things that you don't see, those little tiny particles, those are the things that are flying around. So make sure you, uh, you wear some eye protection. The other thing that you should look at or, or do is once it's on the drill, turn the drill on a bit and See if it wobbles. Um, uh, with all due respect to the manufacturers of these things, 
uh, no, no matter, uh, even though this is a fairly uh, uh, expensive kit, I think, uh, the drill bit wobbles. That means it's going, it may make a, a, um, a, a larger hole because it wobbles while it drills. First thing to do is to minimize the wobble on the drill. So when you put it on, make sure it's tight, put it in front of you, turn it on, and see how much it wobbles. And if it wobbles too much, like, like, like for example, this is wobbling too much for me, take it out, realign everything. Realign the connection to the, to the drill bit. Maybe turn it around. Maybe there might be another a more secure. That to me wobbles a little too much for me, but that's the nature of these things. But do the best you can. Put it back on your drill. Where are you? Put it back on your drill. Tighten it up. Chuck it up, as they say. That actually looks a lot better. And now we're going to drill a hole. Wear, you, wear your eye protection. This is the most dangerous part of this whole thing. Because if you don't use the right, the right bit here, you're in deep doo-doo. It's that easy and that difficult. And the drill came off. The hole saw came off. As is common with these things. But do the best. Do the best you can. So now we've got a hole and it's the right hole. And remember, we, we label this number one. We put it in number one here just so we know that we're using this drill bit. Hey, Paul, before you continue, could you just move the camera down a little bit? Which one? Um, Either one, right? Yeah, that one. <laughs> That's yeah. the one I can see. I don't know if I can move this down any, but I'll try. Thank you so much. Well, this is a multi-camera shoot. You know how expensive these, these multi-camera shoots are? Only teasing. All right, I'm going to get rid of the drill for now and unplug everything. All right, so let's add in our, let's add in our spigot. So you see what that looks like. This should go in fairly easily. If it doesn't, I have to pinch it a little bit. Let's see if I can show that. Looks like on both cameras you can see a little bit of that. Pinch it. Squeeze it together. Put it in that hole. You may want to get something, maybe a finger or a screwdriver, and unpinch it. I also want to add that, you know, sometimes a light tap with a hammer will get it in there. I don't want to give it a big, big hit, but, you know, just, just a little light tap sometimes helps yeah, get it in that's, there, too. That's, that's true. That, that'll work as well. Um, that's it in terms of, of getting this in here. Turn this just a tiny bit. And now our spigot, since both, since the interior here is threaded male, female rather, and this is threaded male, it should line up in the same diameter. It should line up pretty, pretty easily. I have to push this in just a tiny, tiny bit. Again, if I'm not speaking up loud enough, let me know. Eighty-eight. 
So that's it. We've got our spigot in. We've got our, our gasket in. And this is a pretty good uh, a secure. That's a secure fit. And you can see. Can I just remind folks to please mute yourselves um, while the workshop is happening? Uh, it looks like Richard Doyle's the one who should. Just, he got it, I think. Yeah, okay. like All right, thank you, Richard. Okay. So once it fills up, uh, this is a little too high for me, but I might put another block, another uh, pad over here uh, to raise this up just a tiny bit or put a hose on it. So now we've got the spigot in, got our position. Uh, now we got to do the downspout. Oh my goodness, that is probably the worst of the bunch because that is the most awe-inspiring thing to do. And if you own your house, how exciting that is going to be. If you don't own it, oh my God, get permission. <laughs> um, unfortunately, well, let's see, 940. Oh, we're doing really well. We're doing really well. I'm, I'm going to, uh, our, our, uh, our next 20 minutes, I'm going to drill the hole, get this in there, show how, show how to get it in there, and screw it in with two screws. That'll probably take us uh, almost to the top of the hour. And then the rest of it, uh, we'll do another time, or, or uh, if you hang around here after the, after the hour, I'll make the connection. Looks like the connection is going to go here. So when I rough it out, when I rough it out, It'll probably go something like that. Maybe. Or maybe something like, maybe something like that or that. I'm not quite sure yet. So I probably won't do that here. I'll probably have to think about this for a little bit, but something like that. All right, our next. Paul, the recommendation in the kit is usually that you put the um, the hose at the level um, at the same level as the downspout as you want it to be at the top of the barrel, so that uh, it naturally stops filling the barrel when you've reached that level. Right. So probably something like this. Uh, yeah, not quite sure yet. Maybe, maybe right there. Maybe that's where it'll go. So again, take your magic marker. This is a hole saw number three. Looks like it's going to go right here. Do you think you can bring your camera around so that we can see what you're doing over there, Paul? Say again. Can you bring your camera around so we can see what you're doing over there? Yeah, hold on a second. Let's see if this, if this will help. How's that? Is that a little better? And again, spend some time with this. Don't rush into this because once it's set, it's set. Once you've plugged it all in, not quite sure. Oh, there you go. Is that any better, Alicia? Yeah, that's a lot better. Thank you. So same thing as before. Take the, take the drill. Number three, number three. Finger tight is fine. See if there's any wobble before you tighten it up. In other words, see how much play there is. This is a little better. Finger tight is fine. Make sure the drill is secure in the chuck.
start it up, see if there's any wobble. That looks really good, by the way. And then again, let's wear safety goggles. You're not too worried about the stuff you see. It's the stuff you don't see. That's the problem. And then, go drill a hole. the wonders of downspouts. And I'm going to unplug everything. And remove my goggles. Same thing as before, we pitched the, where the spigot is going to get that gasket in. Same thing here. Pinch it, put it in that hole. Paul, before you do that, can you, can, oh, it's too late. Can you pull that out again or too late? Oh, too late. All right. Um, I just wanted to show people that on that piece that goes into the hose, there are two ways to put it in. Um, and it's important that when you want the water to flow, and I think there is, there's an arrow on one of the ends of that gasket so that um, when you want the water to flow into the barrel, you turn it in one direction. Awesome. And then for the winter, you turn it in the other direction and it will prevent the water from flowing into the barrel during the winter. Sure, so, so we put it in and you can start to see some of the water already coming down the sides, coming out this, this hole here. In the winter, you would unscrew it, take the screws out, turn it around, and you can almost see it here where now the water is going right through the downspout and not, not hitting the sides here. I don't know if you can see that. But for our purposes here, we are going to turn it up. There are two screws that come with the kit. They are self-piercing, self-starter screws. So once you get it going, it'll pierce the metal. I'm in the way, just tell me. Paul, you're in the way. You're in the way, Paul. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. It's tough doing uh, right handed work with my left hand. That's um, not too bad. Not too bad. I'm happy with that. And then this goes in here. A little more secure than that. And then this goes somewhere. Not quite sure where it's going to go yet. Haven't quite figured that out. Maybe it'll go right here. Not sure. So. I wouldn't recommend it going into the top because. Um, yeah, I'll tell it, you why in a second, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I, I really like it going in the top. Um, uh, it'll give me a little. Uh, it'll give me some idea of, 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 um, of what else is coming down that downspout. Give me an opportunity to clean it out. I can pick it out on the side with the gasket once it's stuck in there. Uh, my two up there, um, I've got it coming directly on top. So all the stuff that's coming through the downspout, leaves and whatever, will, uh, will give me some idea of... Uh, Give me an opportunity to clean it out as well. So I like this, and I I'm, I may end up doing it just like that. Um, and again, I I may not. Uh, this rain barrel may go somewhere else, so I'm not sure I want to put a put a hole on the side here. Uh, like
like I said, I've got some bedding plants, some ornamentals. Um, I've got some things there that we're not talked about, some invasive that I need to deal with. So, um, so having it in a, in a place that I can, uh, already has a hole in it where the caps are. Anyway, that, that's, that's another way to do it. Well, Paul is the expert, so I would go with him because I've only got one rain barrel and he has like 45. No, I, I would. No, I don't have 45, but <laughs> it's just another way to think about it. Yeah. Jenny has a question. Um, can the rain barrels stay out year round or should we bring them in during the winter? Which is an excellent question, Jenny. Sure. Think of it this way. Water, any, any water, what, um, whatever's left in that rain barrel has to be drained out. You have to drain it. Water expands when it freezes. Right, where, that looks really good. Uh, so when water expands, or before that water expands, you've got to drain it out. And rains, rain uh, may seep in, and when it expands, it may break the plastic, even food grade plastic. So I would recommend draining it and bringing them inside. Those two rain barrels on my deck will go into the garage. This one will go in the, into the garage as well. You can have a side view and a full on view. All right, it's 951, not too bad. So you got some homework. First, go measure your roof where you think this is going to go. Uh, find a place, come up with those, those two dimensions, length and width in feet, come up with inches, figure about an inch of rain. Uh, Rhode Island gets a lot of rain during, during spring. So you, you can make the math easy by just multiplying those two dimensions, converting them to inches to get to cubic inches, just multiply by one, one inch of rain. You'll end up with a bunch of uh, cubic inches of water. And then divide that number by 231. That's 231 cubic inches per gallon of water. Come up with a number. This particular case, it's about 180, I forget what it was, 187, or 212, I'm sorry, about 212 about 30 gallons more than the other side of the roof. That made sense to me here. Um, and it's out of the way. It's not subject to any kind of, kind of mischief that might go on by looking at something like that uh, uh, right next to my garage uh, in full view of everybody. So here makes sense. You may have something different. So that's homework number one. Homework number two, get yourself some, some goggles. It's important to uh, protect yourself, and if you haven't sanded it or painted it, I, I recommend highly that you get a mask, something other than a cloth mask. You get a mask, get an N95 mask or a P100 mask. Those are the ones that are in uh, uh, Home Depot or Ace. Ace has them. Ace has a few left. Uh, but get one. It's not the stuff that you can see. It's those little tiny particles that you don't see. That's the problem. And that's what you're trying to protect yourself against. Pair of goggles is always important. And read the, uh, read the owner's manual. Read the, um, read, read the manual. There, there are some good tips in here, along with uh, some, of the, some of the things that we've discussed over these, these last two days. Paul, they Any also questions? received, um, you also should have received a printout when you got your kits from us of, um, you know, how to prepare and install your rain barrel. So okay. there's that. Um, also, I have left my email there in the chat box. Um, Paul, do you want to share your email or just want me to connect people to you if they have questions? Sure, sure. I'll, I'll put my I'll put my email in the in the chat box as well. And, and we also know? have a request that you put the calculation for rain uh, roof square inches um, into the chat box as well. Sure, you you can find a lot of that stuff online, so you don't have to do the math. But if you have a if you have a phone, and you have a calculator on the phone, uh, it's pretty pretty simple to uh, convert everything from feet to inches, and then uh, divide and then multiply those two together, length and width, 
and then divide by 231. And that's cubic inches per uh, gallon of water. There it is. One more piece of homework that you have to do. Once it's installed, you have to take a picture. You have to take a picture and send it to us. One of the things that we try to promote is that anybody can do this. This is us. This is not a, a fairly, uh, this is not a big deal. It uh, takes a little bit of effort. It take, certainly takes time, but anybody can do it. And, uh, and we want to promote it. So send us your picture of your rain barrel. Get the kids, get the family, get whatever. Get yourselves next to the rain barrel, hold it up, take a picture and send it to uh, Alicia or myself or anybody. And uh, we'll be uh, happy to post it somewhere just to show it off. So I, I'm saying that people should post the pictures to our Facebook page. So if you just go to Facebook and you look for when else we took it probably pick the right one um, I think uh, there's a similar pattern as my shirt here for um, our when else we logo and uh, any other questions before one, one more comment that, yeah, I, go ahead. that I want to emphasize in this packet you'll see this you'll see this where is it there we go you'll see this little tag that says, don't drink the water, please put it on. Even though it's a uh, food grade quality plastic, the rain, the water that comes in it is not necessarily potable water, not necessarily uh, the best water to drink. It's coming off a roof, unless you have anything, if you have a, a metal roof, it might be a lot better. If you have a thatch roof, thatch roofs are probably the best of all. If you have a slate roof, not too bad. But anything other than those three or four, uh, especially an asphalt roof, and that's about 99% of the roofs in the state of Rhode Island. So if you have anything other than an asphalt roof, uh, if you have an asphalt roof, uh, don't drink the water. All right, thank you so much. This has been such a riot, a lot of fun. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have too. Also, one other piece of homework. Send me your comments about this workshop. Uh, was it enough, too much, I talk too much, the videos were in, whatever, whatever it is. Send us your comments. Uh, always trying to improve these workshops. And the only way we improve these workshops is through your evaluation. So thanks to Alicia's, thanks to the council, thanks to the watershed folks. Thanks to all of you for coming and uh, happy rain barreling. <laughs> And I want to give one more special thanks to Paul. Paul, you are a rain barrel rock star, and we so appreciate all the time and effort you put in to help us learn how to install and make sure that we have long lasting great rain barrels for the future. You are the best. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. All right. Go out there. Enjoy the day. It's gorgeous out. Forget the rain. Just go out there. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us.